we're going to compare this uh, next to the Epiphone limited edition 1959 Lazarus. <laughs> couple of differences so let's have a look at those and um, and let's have a listen to them <laughs> which one which one is best neither they're both great they're both great for the money you know great great guitars but yeah, the bad news is you're gonna want both. There's no difference. There's no difference apart from... Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. You're very welcome as always. So today, we're gonna to do another little comparison. Two guitars. I've been promising to do this quite a while now, so yeah, it's about time I did it really. The Epiphone Limited Edition 59 Les Paul. Um, very popular guitar, this. Retails around about £700 in the UK. And we're going to compare this uh, next to the Epiphone Limited Edition 1959 Lazarus. The Joe Bonamassa signature. A little bit more expensive, this one. It was around about, it was nearly 800 pounds, I think, this one. 6799, I think I paid for this, 795. It was about 100 quid more than uh, the 59. We'll call that the 59 and we'll call this Lazarus, okay? Um, yeah, Lazarus, a little bit more rare as well. I, actually, somebody, people have been asking, are they making any more of these? And, and I, we all thought no, but actually, as of now, okay, it's January 2022 as I'm as I'm talking to you now. Well, I'm filming this talking to you, and actually, Toman um, are advertising these as as due in in I don't know three months or something. So you might be able to still get one if if you're after one. I know Toman are advertising them, so yeah, maybe not as limited as a lot of you are hoping though. <laughs> There's always a downside, isn't there? A lot of people happy, a lot of people ah. I thought it was limited edition. A lot of people trying to sell these for a grand or more on reverb will be disappointed. <laughs> but anyway, these are both brilliant guitars and both brilliant guitars. And they're really close specs wise. Um, there's a couple of little differences. We'll, we'll look at that today. Um, that's, that's the kind of point of this. Um, let's just get back to the, uh, this one here, the 59. You, if you watch the channel, you will know that I've done a big series, I've done five part series on this one when we got it, the review, and then comparing it with the Gibson and then upgrading it. We upgraded the, the tailpiece and the pickups. Um, so this is currently a, a kind of a hopped up version of the 59. So we're going to have to take it back to standard or it won't be a fair comparison with Lazarus here. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace these pickups. Currently, this this is um, sporting... This is sporting some Monty's PAFs. But yeah, I've got to put the standard burst buckers back into this before we do the comparison with Lazarus. So I'm going to get on to that and do that now, okay? Uh, and, and while we're doing that, let's have a listen to what this sounds like with the Monty's, uh, with a bit of, bit of playing I did yesterday, okay? All right, see you in a bit. Cheers. <laughs>
here they are. I think these are Greeny Moore pickup prototypes that Matt Gleason, uh, he wound uh, about half a dozen sets of these. He, he told us in an interview um, on the channel, here is the link. Um, he told us all about these and uh, and he said they were launching a, a set, you know, commercially. And, and I think they've just done that and they called them the Bethnal Greens. They're available for sale now on the Andertons website, I believe. And no, I don't get commission and I don't want any commission. Isn't it a great pickup? So, uh, you know, if you want to treat yourself, pretty expensive, but if, you, if you're feeling a bit flush and you want to treat yourself, um, you know, take a look at the Anderton's review. Uh, okay, so moving on, why am I plugging other channels? Stupid. I haven't got the hang of this really, have I yet? Anyway, um, also I took the old lightweight Faber bridge off, tailpiece. I keep, I keep doing that. Tailpiece, I keep the, I took, also, I took the lightweight Faber tailpiece off and replaced it with the Epiphone one. And I've top wrapped it as well, as you can see. Um, same as Lazarus there. So these two guitars now are pretty much the same. There's a couple of differences. So let's have a look at those and, um, and let's have a listen to them. Okay, so both of these guitars, the 59 and Lazarus, have been reviewed in great detail. <laughs> on this channel. Links are there in the uh, description box. So if you want to have a look uh, under the pickups and inside the control cavities, check those out. Um, that's there. Um, beyond that, I mean, well, I can tell you that the controls and the pots and the caps are identical on both of these guitars. And now the pickups are identical on both of these guitars. So they're Gibson Burst Bucker, two in the neck and three in the bridge, CTS pots, and they've both got Mallory caps. So this is all the same. What else is the same? Right, so neither of these guitars have got a veneer on the back hiding what's underneath, which we like. And they're both two pieces. Two piece mahogany, that's what they say. I'll show you Lazarus as well. So here's Lazarus. Also, two pieces of mahogany, same. Next, also mahogany. Now Lazarus here, look, Lazarus here, broke the mold a little bit. Uh, normally Epiphones have scarf joints in the neck and heel joints here, uh, whereas Gibsons have one piece necks. Um, so they broke the mold a little bit with this particular model. Um, I'm not sure if it was the first time that Epiphone have done it, but they made this with a one piece neck. So that is what's different to the 59. As I will show you, here's the 59 and there's a scarf joint, the scarf joint there. Uh, it's quite well disguised on this actually. Sometimes they're, they're, they're quite obvious there, but this one, yeah, there's a scarf joint there and you can see a heel joint there. So, um, but that's one of the main differences between these two guitars. Uh, in fact, the only main difference, apart from obviously the, the veneer that they've put on the top. Not the best representation of a, of a flame top. It's a bit tight. It's a bit one dimensional. That is my only criticism of this guitar, the 59. It's veneer. It's obviously veneer. And, um, you know, you, I, I, that's the only thing I'd mark it down for, really. Whereas Lazarus, Lazarus has got this really nice, they call it a quadruple A or triple A, I can't remember, flame veneer. And it's, it's proper, you know, it's a really nice kind of 3D effect, this one. So it looks much more realistic. I mean, it is a veneer still, but to the untrained eye, you might not necessarily know. I mean, it's still maple, you know, it's still a maple veneer, it's still a maple flame, but uh, as is the 59, but the difference is it's a, it's a wafer thin <laughs> flame top on these. Um, whereas Gibson's, uh, you know, it's the actual maple cap that, you know, gives you the attractive or unattractive finish, whatever 
whatever way you look at it. Now I'm looking at the frets on these. They, they, they look the same. They look the same. They look identical. I'll do some close-ups. Um, uh, let me know what you think. I'll, um, I'll try and measure them and try and check the specs and see if they are any different. And if, if they are, I'll, I'll, well, I'll mention it later. But they look the same. They look exactly the same. Neck-wise, the profile's very, 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 very similar. The Lazarus is a tiny bit deeper. It's a 20, um, 20, just over 23 mil deep at the first fret, according to my measurements, uh, compared to 22.8 for the 59. You're looking at the specs now on the screen, so you, you can see what I'm talking about. According to my measurements, I say that because there's a little bit of, you know, you know I need a little bit of leeway with my tolerances. Um, because they have been known to be a little bit off before. But as far as I can tell, Lazarus, tiny little bit deeper, fuller at the first fret, uh, whereas it actually then reverses up at the 12th fret. At the 12th fret, according to my measurements, uh, 59's uh, maybe half a mil uh, deeper. So there you go. That's what I think they look like. I don't think you'd feel the difference very much. Um, in the real world, they feel pretty much identical. Yeah, I don't think you'd notice the difference. So I don't think the neck shape size is going to affect your buying decision at all. I mean, realistically, I think it's going to be, I think it's just going to be down to look, whether you prefer the look of Lazarus or the 59. Don't forget they do this in a nice cherry burst as well. And if you live in the States, you might have been lucky enough to get some of the uh, limited edition. I think they did honey burst and stuff like that. But I was a bit pissed off that they didn't release any of those in the UK. I think that's Sweetwater, isn't it? Why can't Guitar Guitar in the UK do stuff like that? Or some of the other big boys. Okay, so let's have a listen. Now, today, so I've hooked up the AC30. I don't often use the AC30, but as we're in the downstairs studio, it's a bit bigger. It, it can take the volume a little bit better than upstairs. So, uh, yeah, AC30. These are the settings I've dialed in. Uh, and, and this is here's a shot of my pedal board so you can see what's on today. In fact, I've got a little bit of compression on, a little bit of slapback delay. Um, none of the drive pedals are on at all. So no drive pedals, rolled off to eight, amps dialed in like that.
So I was going to talk about the finish on these as well. They're both identical. They're this kind of satin, I suppose, um, nice, smooth, silky satin finish. Not a high gloss. Um, it's nice, and they're both identical. I suppose they're trying to give it a kind of an age look. Um, it's not like the rubbed kind of looks you get on some of the custom shop, you know, aged or NOS Gibsons, but it's, but I, I imagine, you know, once you, once you start playing these a little bit, it'll, it'll age a bit. This one's got a few little scratches, you know, and fingerprints on it already, which is cool. I like my guitars to look played. You know, I don't think I've polished a guitar for, I don't know. I won't say ever, because I have. I have, um, I've, I've, I've had to, if, if, uh, if, if you sweat on them in a, in a, you know, a, a playing situation, a band situation, you really need to, to kind of clean that off, because that'll eat through, particularly with, with, you know, nitros guitars. Not so much with, with these, because I imagine this is kind of a. I imagine it's a poly. Coat. So yeah, these finishes are nice, and they're the same. There's no difference. There's no difference, apart from one piece neck on this. Nicer top. You know, I don't think many of you are gonna disagree with that. Although there was, a, you know, there was a, when this was released, there was quite a lot of chat, shall we say, about people that had got a fairly underwhelming flame on theirs. Um, although, to be fair, I've had quite a lot of comments from people that have got one of these and everyone's been happy with what they got. Yeah, I've not, I've not had any negative feedback on well, to be fair, on this or the 59, they seem to be fortunately as good as I'm saying they are, which is, for the money, you know, great. Great guitars. Both of these come with a, with a hard case. The cases are the same, actually. They're, and they're actually nicer than the Gibson one that I got with the, the Les Paul 50s. But they've got a nicer kind of... Um, more custom shop like look to the to the to the finish to the pleather i suppose it's pleather isn't it it's not going to be leather i suppose it's pleather whereas the gibson cases are quite hard i'm going to drop in a shot here so you can see the difference this is the gibson one it looks kind of more plasticky um whereas these are the the epiphone ones um which are I, i'm calling this pleather and you can see which ones the joe bonamassa obviously and you might note that the 59 here has got some sort of muck stain all over it. This is because I haven't cleaned it off yet. And what happened was it came with DPD couriers. And I think they left it in the van overnight. And the van roof leaked. And it soaked the carton that it was in. <laughs> and uh, went, through to the, went through to the guitar case and marked it. And it's I don't know what it is. I, I hate to think, to be honest with you. But anyway, I really ought to give that a wipe, wouldn't I? So, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, medallions. There's no medallion on the Lazarus. And there is a limited edition medallion on the 59. <laughs>
that's it. Um, yeah, as I say, if, I've, if, if, if there's something I haven't covered, uh, check out the individual reviews and um, we go into a little bit more detail, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but for now, that's just really to answer a lot, a lot of people asked, you know, what's the difference? Not much is the answer. Not much at all. It's uh, largely uh, visual. Um, and of course, Lazarus is a little bit more expensive. And well, <clears throat> we're going to say a little bit more exclusive, but I, I just checked and it does appear that in the UK, they are on pre-order again from both from Anderton's and from Toman that I looked at. So you, apparently you can order them and they're expected in delivery in something like 12 weeks. So perhaps they are making some more Lazaruses, whereas the 59 is still available in places. Um, so we don't know. We don't know how limited they are, but um, they're both they're both really nice guitars. And, you know, you should. Uh... <laughs> Which one? Which one is best? Neither. They're both great. They're both great. Uh, obviously, it's a matter of choice. I think the smart move is, like myself, if you can, get both of them because they're nice things to collect. All right, so let's let's wrap this up. Let's have another little play out now. And uh, before I do that, I want to I wanna thank you for watching, as usual. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, uh, go over to theguitaristers.vhx.tv. We've got a little subscription channel over there with a forum where you can watch all these films without any ads. And of course, I would say that your contribution will help to keep this channel bullshit free. But of course, I'm still going to be there talking bullshit, although you will know that it's my own brand of bullshit rather than uh, stuff that somebody's paid for. OK, so uh, keep the sponsorship out of this. If you want to watch it without ads, there's an option for you. That helps us. If not, stick around here. Carry on watching here because it's all going to be here still. OK, so uh, on that note, um, thank you very much for watching, as always. Um, hope that's been useful. Hope that's answered um, some of the questions that have, a lot of people have had about these two guitars. These are, were, are very, very popular guitars um, from, from last year. So, and a lot of people wanted to know Obviously, once they got the 59, hey, happy days. And then, of course, Lazarus came out. So a lot of people want to know, oh, is it better? Is it better? Yeah, it's it's a slightly slightly different because it's Joe Bonamassa's signature one. It's a little bit more expensive. It's got some different things. Uh, it's not something you need to get if you've got one of these. I said that in the review. Um, but, yeah, the bad news is you're going to want both. Okay, so on that note, let's wrap it up. Thanks very much for watching, as always. Hopefully that's answered uh, the question that uh, some of you asked. Do you need both of them, really? That was the question, wasn't it? You know, you've got one. Do you need to get the other one as well? Is it any different? Well, it's not much different, is it? You know, we've, we've, we've shown you that. It doesn't really sound very much different at all. Do you need to get both? Definitely, yeah. You definitely need to get both of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cheers for now. See you next week, I hope. Ta-ra. Bye.